Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to cover what is the Power Platform and what are the concepts behind some of those apps. So you might have heard about, you know, the Microsoft no-code, low-code platform and apps like Power Apps, Power BI and Power Automate. But those are just some of the components of what the Power Platform is made of. And in this video, I'll cover some of the concept of the Power Platform, the components and how organizations are using it and solving some of their key problems. So if you are in a company that are already using the Power Platform or are looking for a no-code, low-code platform to solve some of your business problems, then by the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of what is the Power Platform, what are the components, and how it can help you and your organization uh, transform and solve some of your critical problems. So the Power Platform is really part of what we call the Microsoft Business Applications. And next to the Power Platform, you also have Microsoft Dynamics 365, which are effectively a set of business applications that have pre-built capabilities to cover specific processes and scenarios. And some of those include Dynamics for Marketing, Dynamics Field Service, Dynamics um, 365 Finance, and so forth, right? And the Power Platform next to Dynamics 365 is the low-code platform for building custom applications or you can also use it to extend some of your Dynamics 365 applications with additional capabilities. Now, the Power Platform is also tightly integrated with Microsoft 365 applications, such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or Outlook, as well as collaboration tools such as SharePoint and Teams. And we also have Microsoft Azure, which is the cloud computing platform where organization can build, deploy, and manage application and services. And Azure can be used to extend the capabilities of the Power Platform. Now let's take a closer look at the Power Platform and some of the main key components. So let's start with Dataverse, which lets you securely store and manage data that's used by business applications. Data within Dataverse are effectively stored in tables. Then you have Power Apps that let you create custom business applications without writing code. It provides an easy to use interface to create and modify fields, form, lists, and many more. Then Power BI is your business intelligence and data visualization tool that provides real-time insight into organizational data. Power Automate that lets you create automated processes and workflows. Then you have Power Virtual Agents, which is that chatbot creation tool that enables companies to build conversational chatbots without writing code using a visual interface. And then we have Power Pages that lets you create, host, and man administer external facing business websites. Okay, so let's cover each of the components uh, of the Power Platform with a bit more details, right? So effectively, if we start with Dataverse, right? You know, like we said, tables in Dataverse. So you get a set of tables automatically when you start a new Dataverse environment. Um, but you can build additional tables, right? So tables are made of columns. So columns, different types of columns, text, integer, um, date fields, currency, and so forth. You can also have relationships between different tables. We have one-to-one, -one, many to one, um, and many to many type of relationships. We can add additional business logic to your table. So if a field is um, populated, you can also add the logic to set the value of another field, right? Automatically. Um, you can define security where for specific tables, you can define which table is visible to which row. You can even set um, the security to say which rows of each table is um, visible to, to each, each user effectively, right? Um, you can also define your lists. So your lists are effectively lists of records that you can then reuse later in uh, Power Apps to display quickly list of records or in Power Pages, right? And forms the same. Forms are laid out on top of um, data where you can effectively create records or edit records directly. And those forms, you can pick and choose the forms that you want from Dataverse. You can pick and choose the ones that you want to include in your Power Apps or your Power Pages, right? Next one, let's cover uh, Power Apps. So Power Apps effectively two ways of starting your Power Apps. You have your model-driven apps and your Canvas app. So model-driven really where you start with um, picking the tables from Dataverse. You pick the tables, the views, the forms that you want to include in your model-driven app. 
um, you select them and, and choose which one you want to display and they will kind of, um, they will be the foundation of your user interface, right? So, um, you will see effectively those tables and, and lists of, of records and kind of forms of records that you can open then, uh, from there. Uh, it has built-in searching available as well. Uh, you can do some process and automation. So, on, for example, on creation of a record, you can create another record or update some other records or, uh, you know, communicate to other tools or other, other systems. There are some charts and dashboard that you can build. So there are pre-built charts and dashboard capabilities, but you can also, of course, hook in your Power BI charts directly in Power Apps, right? Um, now, if you want to have very specific UI um, user interface for your app, you might want to start with a Canvas app, which effectively you build your user inter interface with screens. You can add galleries, you can add shapes, icons, buttons, and so forth. You can also connect to data, and it can be dataverse, but it can be any other uh, data storage effectively excel sharepoint um and there is a list of 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 data connectors that you can kind of use and 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 point to to use in canvas apps so uh, you have a wider variety of of data stores to use with canvas apps you can add some mixed reality components or ai um or ai model uh, that you you leverage using the ai builder and you can also launch automation same as for uh, the model driven apps, right? You can base on a click of a button, you can call a power automate that will then do something in another system or even do something within in dataverse and create an extra record or, um, or whatever needs you have to meet your requirements, right? So this is for power apps. Now, if you look at power BI, power BI again comes in two flavors. Um, so to speak, you have your power BI desktop, which is a bit more robust where you can connect to many data, data sources. You can do your data transformation and data modeling. Um, you can build report, build visualization, kind of both tools. And then you have a Power BI service, which consumes some of the report that you have built in Power BI desktop. Um, you can kind of also build reports in um, Power BI service and build visualizations, but there is less, you cannot really transform your data. There is also way less connectors. So you have some data sources, but way less to use. Um, however, dashboards, for example, it's where you will create them in your Power BI service. And then you can also kind of build apps and workspaces. So your, your Power BI service where you would consume mostly your reports um, and uh, kind of share them and tweak them and so forth. Power BI Desktop is really where you can model and connect your, your data and model your data and tweak your data basically, right? Power Automate, where effectively um, you can run your workflows automation. So again, two kind of services you can use. You can use the cloud flows, where based on triggers, so triggers um, are actions or something that's happening, right? So you have your manual, so you can launch a, a cloud flow manually. You can also based on the recurrence trigger cloud flow, or based on something happening in another system or in Dataverse. So for example, you have a connector that's called the Dataverse connector that has triggers. And the Dataverse connector, if a record is created in Dataverse, will trigger the Cloudflow to run. You can then have some logic, use expressions, so if, else, and so forth in your Cloudflow. And then you can do some actions. And again, actions are also tied. Most of them are tied to some con connections. So you can have your Dataverse connection. Um, that has actions like create record, update records, uh, you know, associate records to another, but you have also other connectors uh, like the SharePoint connector, the Google Workspace connector. They have specific actions that let you do stuff and things in those other platform, right? So that's for the cloud flow. It has also a run history, same as for desk desktop flows. So desktop flow is really to automate some of your desktop automation, right? So think about if you work a lot in Excel, have to copy paste from one Excel to another, uh, to Word or extract information from Excel and so forth. It kind of can extract those information. It has the, the feature also to record your screen and the, the, the actions you do and record that you can play it back. Uh, later to kind of automate some of these actions. Web automation, same. So you can kind of automate 
uh, the, your, your system or your desktop to navigate to a browser, look up information, copy paste uh, information from a website to Excel and vice versa. Desktop automation, text manipulation, PDF automation, so read the content of a PDF and so forth, or kind of split PDFs and, 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 Kind of to automate a bit your your work and um, you can also run those so you either run those on your local machines or you can run them on the virtual machines for virtual agents where you will build your chatbots and then effectively what you you do is you you create topics and topics are really kind of um, uh, answers to specific questions right that your um, user will kind of ask then you can also create entities so for example age is an entity right if if you ask someone what's your age and they say i'm 31 years old or i'm 31 years of age or um you know i'm 30 they, they type in 31 this can be kind of interpreted in and stored in that age entity and then at least when you do some reporting you can have some consistent some some consistent some consistent values when you you run your report based on on those entities security so you can um activate authentication for your chatbots you can publish them in you know websites uh, Facebook, um, you know, uh, in mobile apps and so forth. You have some analytics to look at what are the topics or the chatbots that are most, um, you know, consumed or what are the topics that are more trendy and some AI capabilities, right? So effectively you can also, um, I don't know, point your, your bot to um, read the content of an external website and then basically that web that information on that website is then stored within your chatbot and can be um, fed back to your user when they ask questions so effectively this the content of your website is then combined with the topics that you created to better serve your um, client and the question they ask and then finally power pages where um, you know what you have from it is again you can pick and choose lists and forms from your database, um, from your database storage. So effectively you can create specific forms for your website that looks slightly different than the one you, you have in your model driven apps. You will have different lists on your website and so forth, right? Um, you kind of build this using a drag and drop user interface. So um, yeah, drop, dropping fields, dropping sections, images, and so forth. Um, header and structure, so you can define a header, logo, menu, and so forth. You can have charts, uh, also uh, have Power BI charts effectively in on your website. Security, so you can secure, of course, your data based on you know permissions of authenticated and unauthenticated users, what they can do. You can have also authentication, and here uh, you can use leverage Azure B2C to kind of um, use other authentication met methods like um, Azure AD, uh, Google authentication. Um, so it kind of have a few different identity providers that you can use and styling. So you can, it provides some kind of basic styling. So you can coloring, um, <clears throat> font, headers and so forth. But you can also extend this using custom CSS. Okay, and then you have a set of features that are across all these apps. So let's start with AI Builder. So AI Builder is kind of your local artificial intelligence uh, solution that you that you can use to um, take advantage of pre-built models, right? So think about um, you know object detection, form processing, sentiment analysis, right? And you can hook in those models to your Power App, so you can have kind of a you know. A, um, uh, form processing within your your app or image recognition within your app you can also leverage those ai model with power automate so if you have a trigger that uh, process you know an image coming in from i don't know from power app power apps again and then do some automation you can kind of leverage the ai builder to extract i don't know image information or text information so you can leverage really the AI builder across um, most of the of the apps within the power platform um, data connectors which are effectively enable your application really to communicate with each other right so connector really 
They help you. Uh, they are like bridges where information and commands travel between those different these different applications. So let's um, consider cl the cloud flows, right? So they use heavily the data connectors. So triggers and action are tied to connectors. Um, and then, you know, you, if you have the Dataverse connector, um, the trigger within the Dataverse connector are on creation of a record, on update of a record, right? So those are kind of your triggers. And then your action are create a new record, update a record, relate the record to one another, and lists, uh, lists your records from a specific tables and so forth, right? And those are just the triggers and action for the Dataverse connector, but you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of connectors. I think we are in the thousands now um, that have specific triggers and actions. Some of the more, um, you know, um, popular ones are the Office 365 connector, the Trade Twitter, Dropbox, Google service, and so forth. So let's talk about PowerFX, which is a functional programming language, very similar to Excel formula. So uh, quite popular, right? Because people know a lot of Excel formula, so they can kind of uh, easily reuse some of the knowledge that they build there. Um, it has a range of pre-built functions that they use it to create complex logic and manipulate data. And it's used across many of the apps, right? So you can use it in Power Apps, you can use it in Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, and so forth. And managed environments, so effectively environments are like containers to store your apps, your data, and your configuration, right? So, for example, you have dev, test, and prod. Those are usually your environments. And with managed environments, you can give more controls to admin by allowing them to set limit of sharing, uh, get more insights about environments, and create data policies. So let's also cover what are the main benefits of using a platform like the Power Platform. So the main two benefits effectively that I see and are key ones are they let you, the platform let you quickly build um, application with no code or very little code effectively, right? So you can build uh, Power Apps quite quickly with drag and drop. You can build visualization in Power, uh, Power BI. You can build workflow with Power, uh, Power Automate, right? Drag and drop those triggers and actions. You can build your chats. You can build your um, external website with Power Pages. Again, with the easy to use user interface, right? So it effectively helps your company remain agile and adapt to changing market conditions, right? And effectively also improve productivity of your staff because you can rapidly deploy those applications. Second benefit is that the Power Platform is very tightly integrated with the Microsoft ecosystem of application, right? So um, your company is probably using, or if they're using, you know, Microsoft 365, like Outlook, Word, Excel, Teams, SharePoint, then natively those applications hook in and are integrated with the Power Platform, right? So, um, and, and also if you need additional capabilities, you can use Azure to extend the Power Platform. If you need additional storage, right? To store very large file, you can um, use Azure to spin additional storage um, and using Azure for that. Uh, if you need some AI, advanced AI capabilities, you can use the OpenAI feature within Azure, right? So you can really extend the Power Platform, again, using Microsoft Azure, um, to make and solve kind of your very complex problems. Voila, I hope that you liked this video. And if that's the case, please give me a thumbs up. And also feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified when I publish new content. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.